Hey everybody, real quick, we are making our own exclusive series of trailers here, and we need your input to help us know how to help this product evolve over time. So stay tuned, leave some comments, let us know, and enjoy our very first couples camper from the GoPlay series. Welcome back to Bicious RV everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here once again with the 26 RLS. We've had a couple of these GoPlay videos come out and folks, man I, I like uh, what you're doing here, but are you going to have anything for couples? And yes, absolutely we will. I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to be a, a, a hit right here. Uh, the 26 RLS that we're looking at has a private front bedroom, really big bathroom with impressive counter space, wide open living area that is carpetless. It's a taller ceiling, good windows, although it is lacking a little bit of windows on the campsite. And I'll never say these are perfect, even though this is something that is exclusive to us and we're developing and we're super proud of it. I don't know that this RV is perfect. In fact, I don't think it is and I have some questions for you as we go. We need your input to help us guide and develop this product for future uh, evolutions and generations. Uh, this camper right here, I think could be a fantastic uh, couples half ton towable model. Uh, because it's 7,500 pounds maximum loaded weight. I think the, the empty weight's under 6,000, so it should be comfortably towable, and it's 30 feet one inch. It's, it's 30 foot basically, so potentially even like state national park friendly. It's not so big that towing it down the road is going to be a white knuckle scary experience or anything like that. Now this whole series of camper, the Go Play series, currently, as we're looking at it today, is an identical clone to a Highland Ridge conventional, which is a stick and tin camper. But that's where this is starting. We felt that that was a really good base and we're going to be able to help shape evolve and edit this thing over time. Uh, again, largely with your input with some interactive things as we go through the year. Uh, this camper right here I think has more storage space than you would think from a model like this. Overall, pound for pound, it is a rock solid little offering. We have an enclosed belly, PVC roof membrane, it's solar prepped up top, uh, you know, big power awning with lighting and a bunch of other things. Again, leave us some comments, let us know what you think. I'm really excited to see what you think about this one. So right away when you step inside, between the taller ceiling, the, the big windows, and the totally carpetless nature of this camper, other than the carpet square, you can clearly see where I rub my feet when I come in, it gives the RV a big open feel, including carpetless in the slide. I love it when the slide floor and the main floor matchy-match. I, I know that's a really technical phrase, guys, but... Um, I, I'm, I, I feel confidently like we have a really educated consumer audience. I feel like you're going to keep right up with that. Now, the air conditioning naturally is centralized, but what's kind of cool is every single duct is both vented and louvered, which is fancy dance talk for the fact that they can all turn and close individually independently, which is kind of cool. Now, again, by default, this is a simple series of camper, not necessarily a big fancy glamper. So things like televisions are currently not included with these. Um, this, most of the floor plans, it doesn't bother me. I will say with this being a, uh, a rear living focused floor plan, it does feel like maybe there's an opportunity for a TV in this one, but I don't know. Would you prefer the concept of dealer's choice? Now the, uh, doors have full viewing windows. They are shade prepped. They don't have a shade from the factory, but that is something like, if you like everything about this RV, but you need a shade in the door, give us a call. That is like easy, piddly little stuff that we can do for you. I do like the big breeze windows beside that sofa, though. That is nice. I think that's where you spend the majority of your seating time. Now, with this being a stick that, sorry, stick built, derp, camper, I think I just had a stronk, I'm not sure. Um, you can put power outlets in the walls, basically wherever you want. And you will see that done here by the seating where I think you might have some phone chargers or maybe a little stand fan or something, uh, as well as uh, over in the kitchen. Now, all the cabinetry is pocket screwed lumber core. And uh, in case you didn't know what that was, it is not uh, necessarily your favorite lumberjack style of heavy metal music, rather. Um, it means that the, uh, the wood cabinetry has an all wood core that is actually pocket screwed together. Now, this is one of the little things I would really like to see changed out. This is a pedestal style uh, table base, and it's inexpensive, which is a goal for this camper, certainly. I will tell you though, I'm not in love with that knee knocker setup. I would really like to see that standardized to just an inexpensive uh, set of folding legs, which would create a free floating table. So if you wanted to uh, dinofa that sucker and take it over by the sofa, or if you wanted to picnic that thing and take it outside, 
you could do either of those. We've got ourselves uh, standardized now based already on your feedback. Uh, uh, eight cubic foot fast cooling 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Um, whereas some of these were kind of originally targeted for a gas electric two-way. So uh, already some of your input has begun to shape this product. And I know that that, you know, there's going to be some boondockers who are like, boo, boo. And uh, okay, I respect that. But this is going to be a case very often of the people have spoken. And, uh, you know, that is what's going to help shape this product right here. Now, the RV doesn't have a normal traditional vertical pantry. It does have uh, a lot of overhead cabinet space, and you can see how you do have some extra storage, which is actually pretty robust, under the television area right there. We will get that all opened up in just a second. I do want to zero in on this. The TV area, it looks really weird and bare and funky without a TV in there. Why is this weird board here? It is intended... Uh, because the, the entertainment center is on a bit of a bias and angle. It doesn't directly face in any of the seating. It's set up basically preset. So if you want to install a swing arm television right there, it's all set to do that. And then you have a little hidden pantry tame behind that, which my Baptist grandfather always referred to as his Baptist medicine cabinet. Then again, that could just be one of those things uh, that... <laughs> my grandfather came up with i don't know he was kind of funny like that you know looking at campsite windows it's not awesome you got one there in the kitchen but if you think about it you've also got the window here in the door or open the door for screen mode not to mention the window over there so i think where you're going to be sitting and standing in the rv you have functional campsite viewing coverage i'm not going to call it amazing though it, it, i don't believe it is you don't have a big campsite picture window, but a floor plan like this just doesn't offer it. It is just not necessarily uh, possible there. Now, I will also say, I don't love floor vents in this RV, and I'm a person who has defended floor vents heavily over the years in a lot of different RVs. There's different benefits to different heating systems, but floor vents will we'll get more heat into the RV more effectively, but this is not necessarily like a cold camp rated RV. So I personally would rather have a ventless flooring system in this one and run the, the heat ducting through the cabinetry. But that's my two cents. Leave us a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see there. Now, uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at this. So you've got a full seven foot, what I call true U-Dinette with full storage beneath and a standard trifold sleeper sofa. So this is a couple's model that could, I think, very reasonably, easily, and effectively sleep four people, maybe six if you're willing to do some sleep and double ups nose to toes style. But I think four is a reasonable number on this thing before you have to throw an air bed or a cot on the floor or something like that. Although nothing says you couldn't do that either. Um, so that's where this one's kind of nice. It's it, like if you're just trying to get a casual couples camper so that you can get out and you can relax a little bit, you don't have to feel, I call it sometimes like grandparent guilt where you're like, oh, I had to put my grandbabies on the floor. First of all, your grandkids don't care. You're the only one it bothers. They're like, sweet, I get to go camping with grandpa and grandma. I went fishing, my feet are dirty, this rocks. And yeah, that's exactly the thought process that goes through a kid's head. I explained to my daughter the other day what goes through our dog's head the other day too. In case you weren't aware, um, the default speed in a dog's head is hamburger, 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 hamburger. Like, look at your dog and just repeat the word hamburger over and over as fast as you can, and you're going to realize that's literally what's going through their minds at that time. Sorry, I got way squirreled off topic here. Moving in, um, this is a love-hate. I don't know if you're going to love it or hate it. This is a full walkthrough middle bathroom. Some people really like it. Some people really don't. It does create a massive bathroom space. I'm not a super fan of the open face linen storage over here. However, um, that can, I, I, what I'm told, work very, very well for just like towels and stuff. So if you wanted to put some kind of uh, bottles of shampoo and body wash, you're going to need to uh, kind of consider that. Now, the space around the toilet is fluffy freaking tastic, basically. And uh, notice that shower. That is a big big shower pan for no larger than this RV is in a stick and tin common class camper. You don't normally get nice big stuff like that. And with a six foot nine ceiling, I can easily over six foot stand in that shower without a problem. Now this I thought is really, really interesting. They have a power vent fan above the shower, like a skylight, which makes tons of sense. But then they have an additional vent over here. It is not a powered 
vent. Now, if you really wanted to, you could either upgrade the main fan or you could install a second fan over here. But again, my question, I don't, I don't know that we really need this. Uh, I think with this being what I call smarter glass camper, everything that matters and nothing that doesn't, I think that the single combo skylight vent fan above the shower makes sense. It makes sense to me. I don't think that we need uh, a second thing over here necessarily, but that's just, I mean, you know, like the dude said, that's just like your opinion, man. Now, I'm at a bad angle to showcase this, but look at the, the fact that they didn't try to get like angular and cute stupid or whatever with their, their countertop, that is a big functional countertop. I really like what they did there. And you have uh, a Sir Mix-a-Lot double up of Lipitorge storage galore. Oh, uh, crack this open. Take a look at this. Now, the bonus footage that you're looking at is in wide angle mode, just so I could fit it all into frame. And if I was going to make another kind of, I think, zero dollar improvement, the shelf that's in that middle cabinet, I'd like to get rid of that and have a bathroom wastebasket space. That's just my two cents. I don't know how you feel about that. Now, we do have a sliding pocket door into the bedroom. Uh, the reason we don't have one into the bathroom is because that's what allowed us to have that big countertop. And I don't love an open cabinet above the bed. I kind of prefer things enclosed, but I've been told, like, you can go to Walmart or Amazon or whatever, get some of these little wicker basket things that work really, really well up there. So, okay, you know, I can see that. This is another thing that I would like to change personally. This RV, by default from the factory, as we're looking at it today, is a camp queen. It is so true queen capable, though. It's not even flipping funny. I'd really like to see it be a true queen. I like the household outlets on both sides of the bed. I like how it's nice and wide open so that if you're claustrophobic, you don't feel really stuffed in here. And theoretically, if you wanted to put some kind of wider king bed in here, you could, although it will overlap with the overhead cabinets. Now, in the back corner, that is uh, either a pair of USB plugs that pops up like you're looking at, or the top portion there is actually a wireless charger, which is kind of cool. I really, I would like to see one of those on both sides of the bed instead of just one, because I don't know about you, but in my household, both of us do own phones. <laughs> but hey, you know, that's just me. TV hookups on the side over there. And these are, they don't have currently an option for factory solar. That's another thing that we're exploring. I would really like to see at least an optional 200 watt solar package with 30 amp controller, but that's my two cents. Again, please share your input, but that's where the wiring comes down from the roof plug into the wall in case you did want to wire up some solar or understand that is stuff that we can also uh, do for you. Now, the bedroom is simple, basic, compact, but taking a look at the storage here, you do have your, your dual hanging wardrobes and you have the, uh, you know, the, the storage under the bed. Although you may notice it does currently lack gas struts to hold that thing up or like a, a anything to hold it up. I would like to see something to be able to hold that bed up other than doing the cute little thing where I lift up the mattress and then shove the folding bed plank under it. That's I, you know, you can get by doing that and maybe that's okay. Is that okay by you? I don't know, but it's not my favorite. Now it does have a second door to the bedroom, but that red handle right there, that is going to be a, uh, a, a deadbolt by the way. And you are probably going to want to do something to accomplish some, uh, extra bedroom privacy right there. Although from the bedroom, I do think it is nice to have the ability to have a window on the campsite of the RV. So in that door, I don't think I would install one of those shades. I would install like a drape over the window on the inside so that you could flip it open and check it out real quick. Um, now the RV is basically fully travel accessible, but it's going to take a little bit of a travel trailer two-step. Because like a lot of makers of this floor plan, this arrangement, well... It gets a little bit pushy. Um, one of the things I was kind of curious about and I was pleasantly surprised to find is like the way this dinette kind of sticks out, like it, it really felt like this area was going to really be limited, but but thankfully the fridge can open, maybe not fully, but I think enough that that qualifies for travel access. And since they put their kitchen drawers over here actually on the base of the kitchen cabinets, that means if you need to stop, you know, grab some food, you got to grab some plates and some silverware or whatever, like... This is perfectly capable of some snacktastic travel access, but if you want to take a nap and take a crap, well, <laughs> then we've got to go through the front door. Which is why I personally really like a second entry door straight into the bedroom um, on a floor plan like this anyway. It's not always necessarily my favorite thing, but 
I like to have options. I like to keep my options open. And I like the fact that if I need to, I can get up here. You know, you don't have to open the slide. Where this is also really nice is if you get to your campsite late at night and you don't want to make a bunch of noise and disrupt the neighbors and be the person that gets the dirty looks in the morning, you can do what I call stealth mode camping where you just pull in back into your site, stay hooked up to your vehicle, and then you can just slip in the front door here, you know, maybe use the bathroom, and then change into some jammies, and uh, to snooze. You know, here's another thing I was saying, I feel this is totally true queen capable. Look how much room there is at the end of the bed here. I'd really like to see this with a true queen bed once again. But uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're sourcing consumer input. We want to build the RV you want to buy. All right, so back outside here, we kind of touched on some of the towability aspects of this RV when we first began, but take another look at the weights and the measures. Basically, it's 30 foot tip to tail. That's a, a nice target right there. Also, fully loaded max with cargo, 7,500 pounds. That is a solid recipe, generally speaking, for half ton towability. Now, you always want to leverage that against the specific half ton in question. I don't believe in um, blanket, oh, yep, half ton all day long, send it, brother. But uh, it, generally speaking, late model tow package half tons should handle this pretty readily. Now, we've got uh, magnet holdbacks on the baggage doors, which is nice. It is going to still be a, a more simple latch system, but again, this is not an over-the-top fancy pants, shiny shoes kind of camper. Uh, I do really like the big pass-through on both sides with a big baggage door on both sides. So, it doesn't matter if you're loading up a hitch after you get unhooked or if you're... Uh, uh, what do I want to say? Like you got those big zero gravity chairs or something like that, or like you got the old, uh, you know, cornhole game uh, going on. Come on. Uh, you've got space for all that. Now it's a simple docking center. It's not fancy pants over the top, but you do have your water hookups and you do have a hot, cold outside utility shower right there. One of the other things I was really glad to see because I've seen some manufacturers kind of biff it on this. It is a single-headed sewer monster. You have but a single stink pickle depository here. Our underbelly, it is uh, enclosed. The roof also has a PVC membrane, uh, which is more sun reflective. So this is not some kind of Arctic Four Seasons camper, brother. It's a spring, summer, fall camper, not a glamper, you know. That's what this whole series is intended to be. But... Also not too bad. Now up front, something that's kind of nice, the power tongue jack, of course, really handy, but 30 pound propane tanks. Let me ask you, that's one of those question points that we have in this. Does it need 30 pound tanks? Are you okay with 20 pound tanks if it saves you some money? Because the Delta cost between those two is actually fairly surprising. Um, you know, if you could shift some of that money elsewhere, would you like to do that? Here's another question. Does it need outside speakers? Does it even need a stereo? We're willing to do some things on this that uh, have not been really done before in the RV industry. And sometimes there's some things that we go, why are those things there? Why are the speakers there? And often the answer is because, well, they've always been there. But do they need to be there? Like, does the RV need to have stable steps? Or would it still be okay with the fold-out uh, traditional steps like you saw for the front bedroom or would you actually even prefer those front steps and there's no wrong answers to any of these questions and I don't suspect we're ever going to get a unanimous answer on any of this but um, you know these are sort of the things that we're wondering now I'm not saying we're gonna kill these things I, right now none of that's decided what we're doing is we're trying to farm some input for you and a couple times a year we may actually host some kind of uh, event where we say, okay, do you want this or do you want that? Do you want this or do you want that? And you folks might literally decide which way we go with this. Now it does have a fully walkable roof. You got a 3 8 roof decking, 16 inch on center roof uh, trusses, 16 inch on center wall studs, 12 inch on center average floor studs with a 5 8 uh, floor decking. So uh, that's what you're, you're looking at right there. And now this is one of those things I think we could make a $0 change and have a $1,000 improvement. Technically speaking, this right here is pointing sideways off the RV. That does technically make it a propane cooker hooker. Personally, I think we should turn that 90 degrees to the back of the RV because as everyone knows, 
when the gas comes out the backside, that is known as a propanus. That is nerdism number 37, if you're keeping score at home, by the way. That's the Josh the RV Nerd uh, drinking game. <laughs> Why 37? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Thank you very much. Now, working our way back around here, one other thing I do want to mention, this is a rack and pinion slide system. So it is a, a really heavy duty, generally regarded uh, by consumers very widely as uh, the, the most reliable slide system out there. And I do like those tinted breeze windows all around. Now, I know I've said it a bunch of times in this video, but we really need your comments to decide how we should evolve this in the future to continue to bring you the RV that you're looking for. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be a very budget sensitive series of trailers. We're not opposed to putting some higher end features on it as long as the juice is worth the squeeze. We'll, we'll have other series of like laminated RVs later over time for some of those higher end features as well. Now, uh, if, if you're kind of curious, check out our wayfinder.com website where we have basically like standardized pricing for these where you can you can order one literally online, have it delivered to any Bish's RV location. Uh, and we have multiple Bish's RV stores that have a, uh, a big slug of these things in stock for immediate availability if that is what you're seeking. So uh, again, keep the input coming. Let us know what you think. And you know, if it looks like it might work for you, well, that's okay too. We'd love to do some business with you, obviously. So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do all the other good stuff. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and go play, everyone. Bye.